We're joined by Wendell Waldron, who's a Mothers Against Drunk Driving Regina community leader. He's in studio with me. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, what do you make of uh, these latest developments sitting back in the Sask Party Caucus and back behind the, the drivers, back behind the wheel? Well, it's disappointing. There's no other way to put it than that. Um, we have an individual who was driving impaired, heavily impaired, seven months ago um, at the, I think it was two and a half times the legal limit. And that person, Don McMorris, has not served out the remainder of his sentence yet. He still has a conditional license at this point. So I understand that he deserves the right for redemption. He deserves the right to move on with his life. But before we talk about that, before we talk about bringing him back into the caucus, we first have to talk about him meeting the sanction, all the requirements uh, for that sanction, and then we can talk about those sort of issues. Mm. At this point, he's only three months into an interlock program. It's not enough. He says, with regard to rejoining the SAS party, that his constituents want him back and that he can do much more good working with government than he can as an independent MLA. What voice do his constituents have in all of this, the people who elected him? Well, I mean, if if that's what they want, um, that's that's certainly their choice. But as a province, we do polls on impaired driving. Do we accept it? Do we want it to go away? And the majority of people in this province don't drive impaired. And the majority of people in this province support tougher laws. And the majority of people of this province simply want a better Saskatchewan, a safer Saskatchewan when it comes to impaired driving. So you have to decide what side of the equation that you want to be on. Do you want to, do you want a safer Saskatchewan or do you want to start electing people into power who, have, who, who, are, who represent the very kind of crime that we're trying to get rid of? What concerns you most, that he's back in caucus or that he's driving? Um, it doesn't concern me necessarily that he's driving. What, what concerns me is the precedent that it sets. And that is that uh, it wasn't that long ago that he was involved in a very serious incident. Mm. You know, we're not talking about an individual that was driving at 0.04 BAC. He, he represents what is considered a very high risk uh, impaired driver. And we don't know what position he's in right now. Mm. And three months on an interlock program isn't enough to judge that. But anyone can apply, right, to to be part of that interlock program under the law. Absolutely. And they should. It's a good program. Yeah. What do you think of what he had to say about it being expanded, that it's very successful? And he's saying it should be expanded. Well... uh, uh, I, I, I have a full. I have respect for Dominic Morris, and I understand his constituents like him very much. I, I want to be very careful with what I'm about to say. Um, I think it's a bit too early for Don to be talking about uh, uh, issues, mandates with respect to impaired driving. First, fulfill the sanction that SGI requires you to complete before you start talking about those issues. Furthermore. Interlocks are for high-risk individuals, generally speaking. The majority of people in Saskatchewan do not drive impaired. Interlocks are particularly effective when you're talking about individuals like Don McMorris, who was arrested about about 11.30 in the morning at twice the legal limit. So this is an opportunity for that person who typically has more issues than simply drinking and driving. It gives them an opportunity to separate drinking from their driving. It allows them a year to get their lives in order. There's a reason why SGI has that interlock on the vehicle for one year, because it allows the person to get their life in order in the event that they may relapse or whatever the case may be. It gives them an opportunity to get their lives in order before we move on to the next step. How do you think his entire case, beyond, as you say, fulfilling the requirements that were laid out for him, how, how do you think it should have been handled? How long before he's allowed to drive? How long before he's allowed back into the SASC party? Well, with respect to how long he should be um, uh, back to driving, uh, Matt has always be- believed that the suspensions should be limited as much as possible. Um, the idea is to get the person back in the vehicle as soon as possible. Now, the reality is, is this. Um, when we're talking about individuals who drive impaired, if you take their license away from them for two years, three years, whatever the case may be, the problem is that same person that is willing to take the chance of driving impaired is the exact same person who's willing to take a chance of driving unlicensed. And unfortunately... Is there evidence to back that up? Well, I mean, this is what Matt. This is the information that we have on Matt mm-hmm. that we've talked about for many years, 
that and and in Saskatchewan, I mean, I believe in Regina, we arrest about fourteen hundred people a year for license people that have suspensions that are un, not licensed. So, mm-hmm. so when you have the the idea is you want to reduce the amount of unlicensed, more importantly, uninsured vehicles who are on our roads. So I don't have an issue with him driving. Uh, but in terms of him getting back into power, serve out the sanction, and then you can talk about bringing him back into power. Okay. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Wendell Waldron is a member of MAD Regina. Uh, He's in our Regina studio. Lots of comments. You can have a read. There's a link to the story uh, on Facebook and uh, lots of people weighing in on both sides of this. Some saying, um, give someone a second chance. Others saying, nope, this is a bad move. And you can have your say as well on our CBC Saskatchewan Facebook page.